Welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. I'm Nikki Limo, and this is Steve Green Comedy. Is that your name this year? I don't know. I never know. I'm sorry. Did so it we're going up? with Steve, we're going with Steve Green Comedy. We're going with Iceman as well. Ace got really popular. It actually exploded over over the break. So mm-hmm. a lot of people are going with Ace right now. And then some people call me the Crypto King. Why don't you just pick one? This is not up to me. These are people naming me things. Oh, okay. So everybody just calls you all different names? They all have diff- disagreements about where what they think I am like incredible at, basically. I see, I see. Yeah. Well, anyway, Happy New Year, everybody. I don't want to spend too much time on the really sexy topic of what Steve's name is. I just wanted to say Happy we New could, Year. We could do an episode about it if you guys we want to. We are here. We are on a new set. We upgraded. I don't know if you can tell, like... We are in a fully it's functioning dining room. It's a brand new set. We had this thing built room. out of balsam wood. <laughs> it's completely built. It looks exactly like our our dining room. It, it is looks not. like our dining room it's, it's, with it's blankets a, everywhere. It's a studio. But it's actually a studio. That we had built. We built this. So We, we had, had it built. built. We, we had, had it built. built. We had it built. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I uh, we uh, COVID, guys. Uh, COVID. The pandemic created a situation in which the studio we were shooting at is no is now defunct. It's I don't over. know. We I don't, don't know, know if it's indefinite. We don't know if we'll ever be back in our white label studio. <laughs> no idea. That we share with all kinds of other people. And we were the first. I know. And we were the only ones last year, basically. That's fair. And uh, we really miss our sound guy, Mark, mostly because I don't know if I did any of this right. I don't know if you're hearing me right now. We're I honestly even... don't have any idea. And, I have no idea. And just a little side note to Mark. Why the hell did we get this studio what does B3? This even do? What is this voice measure? This valve? chord thing Preamplifier. Here? What the hell is going on? Okay, this is not any of the topic that no. we're talking about, okay. but for those of you who've been here a while, you know you're here for the vibe. So exactly. the, sometimes the vibe gets off topic, like right in the beginning. But not often. Not right in the beginning. Yeah. Okay, so do I have permission to get a little preachy? Oh, you know, God. I don't really care if I have permission. I want you, you to do win. do it anyway. I want you to win. <laughs> exactly. You look me in the eyeballs. I am here for you to win. I really just want that for everybody. Every time I figure out something new, and you'll know this if you follow my vlog channel, youtube.com slash Nikki, shameless plug. But if you follow my vlog channel, like anytime I find something that works that I'm like, oh my God, this is greatly improve people's lives. It improves my life a lot. I just want to share it. Same. Okay. And that's why we started this show too, was because like, all these things that I'm like, why the fuck does no one teach you this? Like, I want people to know because you should know. People should know. So today we're kind of revisiting a topic because we have done a topic before of how to buy a house. This is when we were first buying this house that we're sitting in right now. Or I'm sorry, we're sitting in a studio right now. But it looks a lot like the house that we it looks live ex- in. It's identical yeah. from the photographs. Yeah. And um, and so we did a topic back then. But that was our first time ever buying a home. And we kind of just like walked you through our experience as first time home buyers, not knowing anything about how to buy a house or what. Like it was just so new. Every little step was new completely. Yes. And now we've lived here for almost three years, about two and a half years. It'll be three years in April. Go us. Go us. Hell yeah. And I've learned a lot. And uh, and if I were to buy a second home, I now know like a wealth of information going into buying the next home that I kind of wish I knew the first home, but I kind of feel like it didn't matter. In our case, we got kind of got lucky. Yes. Like I, I didn't, I thought I knew enough, but I didn't really know like a lot of the stuff. But this is for anybody. Like if you're trying to get a first home, like you, you, you got yeah. three homes, you're looking at a fourth home. Maybe we know more than you. All right. I, maybe, you know, what do you think ho- of that? hopefully, um, hopefully not. not. Hopefully you've been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're getting your fourth home. Hopefully you've been paying attention so far. But So in addition to just like, how do I buy a house? Oh, by the way, you might hear like a lot from your friends right now because people are buying. The home buying was up. Like it's it's reached a peak. Like people are buying houses like crazy right now because interest rates are so low. And the reason people buy houses, even though prices of homes might be higher, people want to get a home because... If you can lock in an interest rate rate that's this low, and we're talking like it's like two to three percent right that's now, crazy. it's insane. The deals on the interest rate it can drastically shave off uh, the price of your home over time. So, and it's and your monthly mortgages will be a lot a lot lower yes. um, with a lower interest rate. So that's why people are snatching up homes. So you might kind of feel like this FOMO, like you need to get a house, right? You need to get your house and. Maybe that's warranted. Maybe it's not. But um, I th- I do think if you're renting right now, you should start 
kind of planning and saving towards buying a house because right now if you're not retired and it, and hopefully if you are retired you you like planned ahead and you have like cash flow and wealth and stuff but if you're not you this stage of your life all the way up until retirement should be like this building phase of where you're like building your net worth you're building your net worth so that you can create cash flow later or, or like even close to retirement hopefully your money's not just all going back out the door Right. Hopefully, you're doing something with it that yeah. I builds mean, yeah. Something for I you mean, later. Uh, that you're building assets because mm-hmm. when you build assets, that's when you can get cash flow later. Um, and mm-hmm. and buying a home and having a home under your name is an asset, and it and it raises your net net worth. And a lot of people maybe think they can't do it, but I feel like you can. And I think that well, I know you can because we did it, and we're like we're not we're we're just dumb we're yeah, dumb we're not that, we're not no. that great we're not that big none of my nicknames we're involve like smarts a, okay <laughs> we're middle tier youtubers yeah come on <laughs> you know and um and it's just it's just a combination of a lot of things that i'm gonna about to talk about okay so first of all if you're gonna buy a house this sounds really stupid this sounds really cheesy not stupid but cheesy but you have to commit you just have to commit it does to sound buying- cheesy it, you, you just have to commit. Yeah. Uh, no, but I'm serious because if, you, if you're if you kind of waffling back and forth, if you're like, uh, you know, I kind of like my rent, uh, my rental or whatever, and I'm not really into it, you probably won't have the discipline to save the money to put the down payment down. Because once you get extra money or you see those dollar signs that are just extra, you know, what, what, what do you do when you see extra money? You want to spend it. Yeah, you know? I guess what Nikki's trying to say is, are you guys really taking this seriously right now or not? This is for serious people only. <laughs> This is the serious cho- show, the serious uh, channel. By the way, this is a common sales tactic that people use to get you to buy shit like yeah. quickly. So that's, or especially that's what... to induct you into pyramid schemes. Yes. We're so... looking for serious people only. Oh, you're leaving? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I think you could be serious. I think you could. I think, I you, think could. you could. I, I see it on you. It's so fun. <laughs> no, but I hear a lot of people that are like, "Oh my god, I really want to buy a house, but I just don't think it's feasible." And it it, it I hear is it all the time, especially uh, if you live in Los Angeles, it California. It feels like a mountain too. Like it seems impossible. It really does. And I, I remember before we bought our house, I it felt that way. It's like, how are you ever gonna put down that much money? But you don't have to. And that's what I'm gonna get into. Yeah. Also, okay. So if you're gonna buy a house, commit to buying it. Number one. Number two, study the market. This mm. part is probably the most important. Study the market that you want to buy a house, and don't just be like, I want to buy a house anywhere. How do you start studying the market? Okay, for me, for example, and I can only talk from experiences because I'm not a real estate agent. I am not going to act like I'm an expert in this field. But uh, for me, I knew what area we wanted to live in. You know, and there were a couple runner up areas, but mostly like I liked living in the valley. We had been renting in the valley for like five years at that point. And you were such a valley hater when I got with you. I was such a valley hater. Oh. Oh my God, I hated the valley because... It was just so hot. It, it is hot. It's hot. It's hot in the valley. People are, are always like, oh, you're going to move from California to Vegas? Because we're thinking about doing that. I don't know if it's going to happen, but we'll just see. like spoilers. Um, and, and they're like, oh, it's so hot. But it's fucking hot in the valley. Yeah, Guys, it was like 107 here over the summer. We live in it. We're good. It's hot. Yeah. Okay, and it's dry. It's not. It's just the same. We live in a desert. California yes. is not all ocean. Um, and by the way, I looked at the ocean areas. They were extremely expensive. There was no way we could buy a house out there. And you, your car gets all fucked up because of the ocean. Area. Oh, true. Yeah, I lived in a beach town all my life until I moved out of my parents' house. So, mm. yeah, that is that is true. Um, the air is a little uh, wet. Yes. The air is wet. Um, so anyway, study the market of the area that you want to purchase a house in. And if you if you don't live close to that area, lucky for us, we lived close to that area. So I would drive around there all the time. It was really easy to go to open houses. kind of. And what I mean by study the market is like see what size houses are going for what price and what your budget is or what you think you can do for a budget. Um, and, and look at those houses. Look at the, the quality of those houses. Look at the size of those houses. Are they condos? Are they, or can you get an actual, like here in LA, we couldn't afford an actual house unless we went to like somewhere in the boondocks outside of the city. And for us, the reason why I felt the Valley was the best choice, not only had we lived there for five years, but also it was close to everything. Like it's close to the city. It's close to everything that we do, close to work, 
everywhere we work. By the way, people who live in those houses, we don't even want those houses because we don't even want those houses because we drive through Laurel Canyon sometimes. And where do you even park? And oh and my how god, how do you get out of your house? Yeah, how do you Ugh, even, don't want it? <laughs> there's not even a sidewalk for you to walk a dog or nothing. Like it's all wrecked over there. Forget it. I so. will say I'm okay with my house getting destroyed by the beach. I would love to live by the ocean. I would love it too. It'd be my favorite. <laughs> but that's later down the line. Yeah. Okay, so, so you I, go to open houses. We did that. That was awesome, by so, the way. So yeah, back in the day, we went to a lot of open houses. You, I mean, your weekends are basically filled with open houses. We were doing four or five a week, easy, yeah. and then the weekends and got then crammed. Throughout the week, I would be like constantly on Redfin. There's a few apps. If you don't know what apps to use, uh, Redfin's a great one. Um, what's it called, uh, Zillow and uh, Realtor.com. I use Zillow and Redfin probably the most. Um, I what? feel like, well, Redfin has the most options, but Zillow I feel like has the most current options. Mm, so yeah, sometimes like stuff will stay on Redfin after it's already in the process of being sold and you just don't know. And then you think you're like, you waste your time like going to it. Okay. But it's already gone. Um, but in the time of COVID, you haven't been able to go to open houses. So you do have to schedule with a real estate agent. So that's another thing is if um, the next step would be to go find a real estate agent. And if you already know that the area that you're looking at, it's really easy. If you don't know a realtor already, like you don't have a friend's referral or anything, you can go on Zillow and you can like filter to only see real estate agents in that specific area. And then you can see their rating and then you can click on their name and you can see all the houses that they've sold in that area. So if they're really so, fucking killing it, yeah. you want the the realtor that's killing it in the neighborhood that you want to buy in. You don't want like someone from Las Vegas picking out a house in the Valley in California and vice versa. You know, you want someone that knows that specific neighborhood inside and out. Because then he can get you the deal there or whatever. Like that's that's why, right? You want you want somebody who knows the area in and out. So yeah, I mean that's exactly right. You want to get the deal. This is this is I all keep, about getting I think the deal. every step is the most yeah. important step. Yeah. This is the most important step. Because our guy, he actually knew the area and we had been talking to several people and Nikki is a computer brain also. So it was funny to hear certain people, she would say what she wanted, and then certain people are like, oh, that's not gonna happen here. And then this cat was like, oh, and Nikki would be immediately be like, oh no, I saw two properties like that actually, like just last week. Yeah, and actually. they're like, oh really, oh, I don't know, I, I, I haven't seen that. And then and then finally, you were almost like, you, you met your kindred spirit when you, we met our guy, Raph. Oh yeah. Because you're saying this thing, he's finishing your sentence with another property, and like you're finishing his yeah, sentence with another. He already saw all the properties I looked at and yeah, everything. Yeah, both did. And that's what I was gonna say is, going into this, you want to look for a deal. Like even though you want a house really bad, you know, and you're gonna fall in love with a lot of houses, by the way. Once you start looking at houses, you're just gonna fall in love, just get used you to have heart, your get heart used broken. to your heart breaking yeah. over and over and over and yeah. over again. But the truth is like a lot of these beautiful places that are turnkey are maybe not a good deal. And maybe they're fair mm -hmm. priced, mm -hmm. but they're not a deal. You want a fucking deal. Yes. Like get a deal. And this I think came by accident because like Steve said, I had a high list of demands because we wanted at least three bedrooms um, with an outside area. And because we, even though we were only two people, we were both working from home. And so it was really hard not having one of us, not having an office. So we really needed at least three bedrooms. So each of us could have an office and the bedroom and then at least two bathrooms because that literally saved our marriage oh like, hell yeah we can never go back to having one bathroom no. sharing a bathroom was like caused so many fights you don't yeah, even it was, know it was just weird our too. relationship sailed after we got yes. two bathrooms so we, we talk about it all the time i know for those of you who are veterans but guess what it really is that great yeah really i'm, I'm but i'm telling you my list of demands was like three bath at least three bedrooms at least two bathrooms an outside area and it has to be bigger than our apartment was for less than five hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars in la that is damn near impossible to find even for a condo even in 2017 when we were looking mm -hmm. but what i was getting pissed at is i started looking in 2016 and i could find all kinds of those deals but then in 2017 everything shot up because prices of real estate here just continue to go and go and go and go and then you just like you you're out budgeted now like now things are out of your range and you have to like look at the outskirt areas so i was asking for a lot and realtors were telling me that it was impossible they said no a lot but i am very stubborn mm -hmm. very very stubborn and that's why our realtor ended up being a kindred soul because yes. immediately i knew you're the one 
you're going to help us find this place. Yeah. If there's a deal to be found, we will find it. So he knew my long list of like, like no, like they they had to happen. What are they called? Knew, um, yeah, your, your, your musts. My non-negotiables. Non-negotiables. Yeah. He knew all that. He knew our price range. And then he had like the off-market stuff that wasn't quite on the market yet. It was about to get on the market. And there were some times where like, I was like, I give up. Like we looked at so many yeah. properties. You, you, you told me so many times that we're going to die in this apartment. I really we, thought we were going to die in our apartment. That we were driving back to. By the way, I hated our apartment. Yeah, me too. We lived in there for four years and it was the most uninspiring like it, the carpet was disgusting, like yeah. disgusting. Even when it was clean, it was dirty and it, there was no natural light at all. And it was really expensive for like, like the crappiness of it. Yeah. Like everything was, like all the features were outdated. You're paying for the location. You could look at old videos on this channel um, if you're watching on YouTube and you can see, like look at the old Tasty Tuesday videos. Look at that kitchen. We were paying $2,000 oh, yeah. a month. Yeah. And um, anyway, it so a, it was a hallway more than a kitchen, frankly. Yeah, exactly. I think they call it a galley kitchen. Oof. But yeah. Um, so anyway, find a good deal. I did this by accident, but it worked out because I didn't have the budget. And so that's why we had to find a good deal. Yes. But we found this place. Like look for if you're let's say your budget is 400000 Look for a, a $300,000 place in a $400,000 area. Like a neighborhood that all the all the surrounding houses are four hundred thousand, but you find this deal that's like in the three hundred thousand range. That's a good deal. Find out why it's on sale. Yeah, find you out. You don't know why. It could be a lot of things. It could be a lot of things. But if it's just on sale because maybe the sellers have an urgency to sell, which I think was our situation. Yes. Um, maybe uh, the, there needs to be paint. Maybe there needs to be carpet. Ours was listed as is, but there were no big things wrong with it. No. Like you have an ex inspector come in and that's what the inspector's for. They come in, they inspect the roof, they inspect the electrical, make sure all that shit is working. Um, the plumbing, make sure that is working. If those all those big things are fine, they're all good, they've been replaced recently, you don't have any problems with those, then it's just, and it's just the paint and carpet. And maybe like it smells bad or maybe there's like, I don't know, some sort of infestation that you yeah. need to get rid of or so, something. I don't know. Figure out why it's on sale. And if it's doable, if it's just cosmetic, you can do that really easily. And then you're getting a deal. So immediately after you buy the place, you slap a coat of paint on, you change the flooring, you change the lighting. You just made like 80000 to to $100,000 just by just by those little details. So th I get really excited about that because- I know you're cute, it's funny. <laughs> because we found this place and I knew we were getting a deal because I had searched high and low for two years. I knew the area inside and out. I knew that this area that we live in now is it was a growing area. Like they're building a mall nearby. There's freeways really close. The, there's another mall. There was like Trader Joe's and Ralph's and like every, it's convenient to everything. Um, it's uh, Sherman Oaks adjacent. Mm -hmm. Sherman Oaks is like the richer area in the valley. Yeah. So it's like really like it's up and it's coming. coming up, it's guys. up and coming. If the pandemic didn't happen, this place would be booming right no now. No question. Right now. Um, so I knew we had a deal. Oh my goodness. This is the thing about recording at home. I mean, yeah. in our new studio is there's kitties everywhere. There's kitties all over the place. You're watching on I YouTube. I got a kitty on the shoulder. There's right a kitty now. on the shoulder. Yeah. Well, the YouTube people know that. Yeah. But the people listening, I need to narrate yeah. that there is now um, a gray kitty. We have four cats, by the way, now. Yeah, that happened to us, um, too. But in our in our house that we have now, that's a cat per 400 square feet. So it was doable. This is the classic gray one. This is the cl the original. Yeah, the, the coop. The OG. Yeah. So you get what I'm saying, Yeah, right? no, look. Find a deal. When we were, all, when we were looking, too... Um, we'd gone to so many different places that didn't quite measure up to what we wanted and with the price point. Yeah. But once we walked in here, we're like, this is a fucking deal. Yeah. That's we, that's when you know too, is it, when you do enough research and you're standing enough of these places yourself, when, do you, when you're in a deal, you'll know. Honestly, it's like dating. Yeah, it is. You know, when you know what you want. Yeah. When you're not just like, I'll take a house, any house, I just want a, a house to love me. Exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly. When you really know what you want and you're like, you won't settle because you know the ones out there for you. I think that 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 you'll, you know, find the one. And by the way, keep in mind, if this is your first property, I don't know, it, it depends on what your goals are, but I, we weren't looking for our dream house. This no. is our starter Star home. House, yeah. 
we just want to get some assets under your belt, you know, like you, you can get your dream house later. You can, but right now we're like, we're building. Mm-hmm. And I just feel, feel like that is something people miss because you know, it's not taught in school to like focus on building wealth. It's taught in school uh, that people have, you know, they get married, they have kids, they buy a house, you know, like yeah. that's the way. Well, also too, if you live in certain states, you can pretty much do that pretty easily. Right, and you can buy a, a pretty decent size house yeah, yeah. like right yeah, out of and the like you, and you're making good money now maybe you're in your 30s you're like ah, i could you know max out my budget and buy my dream house mm-hmm. but and that's great i mean that's wonderful for now but then what happens when you want to retire you're not like um you know building the wealth you're just kind of like making ends meet and i feel yeah. like a lot of people end up in that situation and and that's i mean we've been there many times and i feel like that um that's really normal because no one teaches you this shit no it's just some shit they don't tell you so i feel uh i feel like yeah starting with a starter home we just wanted to have enough space to work from home without i need to be able to make videos without hearing steve in the other room yeah. and this space was just perfect for us for what we needed at this time in our lives what do you say to people who are like okay well i definitely want to do this but the down payment is is a doozy right so get this you could put you don't have to put 20 percent down i know everybody talks about 20 percent down 20 percent down right you hear that everywhere or your offer is not going to get accepted if you don't have 20 percent down that's not true for our place we put 15 percent down and it got accepted over other offers that uh were putting 20 percent down uh because of some little things that we did and which i'll get to but also there are ways like in california i don't know if it's like this in every state but you can get FHA loans where you only have to put three to 5% down. And then um, you live in there. Let's say you get like a two bedroom or whatever and you live in there and then you fix it up while you're there. You depreciate the loan, you refinance in a year and boom, you have 20% equity. If you found a deal, you have 20% equity in your house. Do you get rid of that mortgage insurance? If you think, if you think, oh, well, if I don't have 20% down, then that's a couple extra hundred a month um, in PMI, everyone talks about this thing called PMI and PMI is like basically the banks or whoever's loaning, giving you the loans. That's their insurance that you won't, you go, go upside down on the loan. Like you're going to be able to, it's like their insurance against you not being able to pay it back. I see. Yeah. Because if you only have enough to put less than 20% down, then I don't know, you're kind of iffy. I see. Right. But then if you refinance and your, um, your house, appreciated in value, which it probably will if you did enough research on your area, um, then you can refinance and then you have 20% equity plus some. That's when you can take cash out, which is, Ooh. I had just, I've just been learning about like the refinance process because we just recently refinanced and I didn't really understand it before, but I'll get to that later. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just start where, where we were. Where were we? We're about putting the down, down payment, payment down. Okay, yeah, so you can get, just save up 5%. That's crazy. Like wow. anybody can uh, can do that. Like if you're managing your money, pro- your cash flow proper- properly, like say, take a couple years, you save $15,000 up, you can buy a $300,000 house with $15,000 and your loan is $285, $285,000. That would be incredible. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be, the math would be really bad for the bank, but really bad for the bank. <laughs> But like yeah, you, you can, um, that's like, that's, that's doable. As long as you can make your monthly payments mm-hmm. and you can prove income. Don't like try to, I think there's like a rule, like you have to, the monthly payment is no more than like 30% of your monthly income, something like that. But you can get away with like probably 50%. It's just that like, they really got to like you. Okay. Like really got to like look into your stuff. Oh, and then another thing that holds people back is credit score. People think that like they have to have perfect credit before they get a loan because I always like, thought that. Yeah, but you don't. Like, yeah, your interest rate's going to be higher. Okay, but 
if you have a 740 credit score, it really doesn't make a, di- a big difference between 740 and 800. Like you really don't have to have a perfect credit score. If you're above 740, you're golden. But if you're below 740, like I was, like when we first uh, got this house, I had to apply under my credit and I had fucked up credit because I had a charge off. I had a couple of charge off accounts and they were they were just not going to disappear for like seven years or whatever. And so I was still waiting my time out. Uh, my, my credit score was only like 680. And I got approved. Mm-hmm. So, um, oh, that's what I was going to say. After the realtor, after you find your realtor, get pre-approved on a loan right away. See what you can get approved for. Because it's really going to break your heart if you fall in love with a place and you can't get a loan on it. Or a realtor. And a lot of places right now don't even like look at your offer if you're not pre-approved. Exactly. They, 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 you won't, they won't take you seriously if you're not pre-approved. Yeah. They want certain... They only want serious people, okay? Serious people. Serious people. Are you, where are you going? No, are you, come, wait, come no, back. Come no, back, come no. Back. You look serious. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm getting really excited. I don't know if any of this is making sense. You tell me if this is any of this is jumbled. It's not jumbled. No. But let's walk through each step of it. Okay. Let's do that after this break. Okay. Wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor today, Best Fiends, our favorite app. We love Hello, Best Fiends. Our favorite app to game on. It's a new year, and if you haven't gotten on Best Fiends yet, it's time to get on Best it's Fiends. It's the year for you to get totally obsessed with this game. Yes. Um, this game is free to download, and that's another reason why it's so easy to get obsessed with it. You don't have to pay any money. Um, and there's always new levels. I don't know how they have the time or the budget to create this many levels, but they do somehow. Yep. And you are constantly wanting to beat the slugs. You want to collect new characters. You want to go through new lands. And the graphics are amazing. As a child, I never thought, you know, when you got a game, it had a certain amount of levels and it's done. Yeah. I never thought I'd live in a world where Best Fiend is giving you new levels every constantly. single day. And there's Crazy. new challenges and like you need to collect certain characters in order to defeat certain slugs. It's just, it's challenging, but the right level of challenging, if you like puzzle games, you're going to love this. You're going to love Best Fiends. If you haven't gotten addicted already, you will. It has over 100 million downloads. They probably already did. Okay. Yeah. So download Best Fiends free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Download Best Fiends free today on the Apple App Store or on Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Fiends. Okay. Welcome back. We're back. Hello. I accidentally messed up that main camera. I'm sorry if it's different now. It's all good. I'm not that sorry. I know. (laughs) You don't ever know what's going to happen. We're wild around here. Yeah, we knock into stuff sometimes. Okay. So where was I in the process? Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're you just study the market. through studying the market and then get, uh, getting you, your 5% down. You get a realtor. Mm-hmm. You get pre-approved. You find a good deal. Those are the steps that we've done so far. Perfect. In that order, too. Okay. Okay. And, and then getting your down payment together, get, you want to save up 5%. Yeah, at least 5%. If you can save up more, great. Do it. Do yeah. that. Like, if you could save up 10%, 15%, it's going to help you out with the monthly cost. You can also afford... Uh, a price to your house you know if you if you fall in love with something you know but don't stretch yourself you know yeah don't, don't stretch your monthly budget keep it where you know you know what i'm saying anyway um yeah so you don't have to but my point was you don't have to save up 20 percent. right people think you have to save up 20 percent. you don't and so yeah basically i got approved on my 680 credit score you don't have to have a perfect credit score yeah i had a really high interest rate like it was 5.6 percent that sucked, but we could make our monthly payments, mm-hmm. so no problem, okay? And then we just refinanced, and we now we had to, Steve has a less good credit score. My credit score changed. It's yeah. now better because that charge-off account is gone, and so um, the mortgage payments helped build the credit. Yeah. So my credit score is at like 800 now, which is great. So um, sick. But then we also, because Steve and I are both, were together, um, they go off the lower person's score. Yeah. So, so yeah, we refinanced a year and a half later, and it's like now we're paying less per month than we were with our two bedroom apartment, and we have double the square footage, and all the monthly payments are going towards our equity. Yeah. Oh, another thing with the loan though, and Dave Ramsey's probably gonna hate me. You gotta pay cash. Well. Okay, let's assume you can't. You buy a house, pay cash. Yeah, that's in his dream world. But he also says if you do have to have a mortgage, 
to do a 15 year mortgage over a 30 year mortgage. Yes, he, he loves that. I don't agree with that. Why? I don't agree. Because if you do a 30 year mortgage, you can make your payments early. You can pay your monthly payments as if you're doing a 15 year mortgage, but you have the option. So you don't have to. So you're not going to get in trouble if you can't make that payment that month, you know? So right now, since interest rates are so low, it would serve you better to borrow more and leverage other people's money. Leverage the bank's money, leverage, leverage the mortgage lender's money. Right now, when interest rates are low, it would serve you better so you could take that cash and you could put it in another investment that's going to get you more annual return than paying off your mortgage early. Like what? stocks well we're gonna do a whole episode on investing okay. but yeah for example there's so many things but for example you could buy another real estate property right you know if you save up enough cash instead of paying double mortgage which for the first handful of years is all going to interest anyway um you could save that cash flow by another rental property if james ramsey was here in this room yeah first of all i'd be sweating because yeah. he would hate everything you're saying i know <laughs> and, he, and he loved paying cash. Got to pay cash. Yeah, you got to pay cash. But he would say that that's a huge risk that you're taking having two. I got to have two mortgages, uh, and if any of those go underwater, then yeah. you're really in trouble. Right. So you want to make smart choices. Yeah. And I'm not telling anybody to go buy two houses right now. What I'm saying is you should buy three houses. <laughs> buy five houses. <laughs> Don't look at the Why area. Why stop at two houses? Is what we're trying to. We say. could have five. <laughs> so. Okay, you get your first property and you live there and you you like for a few years and you refinance after a year or two and now you have more than twenty percent in equity and maybe you have extra cash left over because when you refinance like you, sometimes you refinance and you there the difference between the loan and what your house is worth is like could be a hundred thousand dollars right so you can take out forty grand and still have twenty percent in your property right right so then you take that 40 grand and you can maybe if you're not Dave Ramsey or maybe if you're not following Dave Ramsey <laughs> but you can take then that money that you're go search for another property that's a great deal that's maybe a four hundred thousand dollar property in a five hundred thousand dollar neighborhood now you have ten percent down that you could put down and you go live there you and you rent the one that you're living in now you rent that out because you did all your research, you made sure it was in a good area with good schools and and all the all the stuff, you know, like um, you make sure that like if you leave your house at 9 p.m. that you feel safe out there, yep. you know, and then you could rent that place out easily. Listen, I personally agree with you. Yeah. But if Dave Ramsey was here once again, I know he would say, OK, you just took out that loan. Now you got to pay that loan back and you're going to take it into this other risky investment. Dave Ramsey is great if you're in fuck tons of debt. Go listen to Dave Ramsey because clearly something happened along the way where you didn't manage your money correctly or you, you fucked up habits. somehow. Yeah. Something happened, you have bad habits, and you need to go reestablish those habits. But if you are in a stage, let's say your debt's paid off. Currently, we don't have any debts outside of our mortgage. Okay, so you're in then in David Ramsey's program, you are in the wealth building stage. If you have an emergency fund of six months, we do. If you don't have any debt, which we don't, um, you're then in the wealth building stage. And I think Dave that- Dave Ramsey would like that, by the way. He would if love he was that. Here, he would really like that. He Thank you. Yeah. And I also, well, he also hates that. I like credit cards. Yeah, he hates credit but cards. But I pay the balance off every month. And that's the difference is that I think you could get in a lot of trouble if your habits aren't there. If you just are seeing credit cards as free money or like, oh, I'll have the money later. No, no then you're paying interest. I don't like paying interest, period. We, we were just able to afford some uh, cool Vegas things because of uh, because of that, Yeah, right? like yeah. flights, hotels, yeah. Um, entertainment, free. free. Do you like free? Free. Because I like free. I like free. Yeah, so I just I hope mean, we can go because of COVID stuff. <laughs> I, right, exactly. I planned it. I, I just booked the trip for like months from now. Yeah. So hopefully things Fingers are opening crossed. up. Vaccines happen so or whatever. So that is cool though that, that you can... That that gives you that kind of leverage, right? I mean, from just what we okay. paid for our stuff. And let's say, oh, you're you're 20 years old, and like, why do you need a house for? Because like, eh, it's a lot. It's a headache. Okay, what if you can't make the monthly payments, and then like, you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna be fucked, right? Yeah. But you're really not, because 
you can rent out the other rooms in your house or you could like you could always rent out your house and then go re- back to renting or you could sell your house or the banks the banks are so much nicer to people uh to people that own homes than they are to anybody else oh yeah like they want you to keep your house like they they want gonna, you to stay stuck in your loan you could, for as long as possible yes yeah, so yeah. they could they'll talk to you like you can talk to them it's not as bad as like a nightmare scenario than anybody's thinking. I just love it, man. But I do know that Dave Ramsey, you know, had a bankrupt story, bankruptcy story from yes. doing real estate kind of yes. maybe similar. Uh, well, I don't know about that. But I don't he know also if it was had, similar. He also had huge credit card debt. And then somebody... Yeah, don't, don't get into debt. Yeah, don't get into debt. Unless then, you're leveraging someone's money to get buy an asset not don't get into debt over liabilities don't get into debt over material goods that aren't appreciating value get into debt over an asset yeah because you know what okay look i'm gonna level with you this is we put seventy five thousand dollars as a down payment into this house that's 15 percent of what the house cost i could have put that into an index fund right yeah. an index fund a lot of people would say is very safe it has a historically seven percent return on investment uh, if you reinvest dividends and you account for infl- inflation, 7% a year, that's pretty safe. That's pretty good. Your money would grow, right? Um, let's see if it was even 10%. Oh my God, that's crazy. Like, so 10%, you're looking at over two years, which is how long we've had this house. Mm-hmm. I put my $75,000 in there. I get 10% a year. That's 15,000. Oh wait, what if it was compounded? Oh my God, that's 16,000. Okay, so you got $16,000 on your 75,000. Wow, you made your money grow. That would be an investment. Okay, but here I'm leveraging someone else's money. I didn't have $525,000, but I'm leveraging the bank or the, as actually not a bank as a yeah. mortgage lender that's going to give me their money Idiots. And, <laughs> and then our house appreciated and even though the value of our house only went up seven to nine percent a year mm-hmm. seven to nine percent that doesn't beat an index fund but wait my equity doubled in two years that's key man that's doubled. key that's key so sixteen thousand or 75,000. Sick. It doubled. So you so you see like I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't leverage someone else's money. How would you do if you put that 75,000 into Bitcoin back then? Um, let's see. What 75,000 or 70, what was 000? Bitcoin now? It was oh boy, I think it had dipped then. It was like mm, Five thousand. I really want to do the math on this. Can I do it later and come back to you, you and tell you? Yeah, because that's funny. Because I really like to yeah, do math I on when it happens. I love math when it has to do with money, <clears throat> yeah, and not it, money it, going into other people's pockets, but money going into me our too. pockets. Me too. Right. So I don't know. I think that's a concept that maybe people that don't like math, maybe you didn't think about that because you see real estate. Oh, real estate only goes up seven to nine percent. You know, unless you bought during a crash. No, no, you're the equity. They lose though. the equity part. Yeah, the that, that part has been a eureka thing for me too. Since yeah. you've been railing on that past like month. Yeah. So then, so now we refinance. You have had twenty percent. Um, we have twenty percent, more than twenty percent equity. Mm-hmm. We could, if we wanted to keep our mortgage payments the same as they were before. Now we refinance to get a lower interest rate and for to lower the monthly payments. Mm-hmm. But if we wanted to keep the monthly rate we were paying before, we could take out fifty grand right now. And still have twenty percent equity in the property, and that's that's because of the leverage. Yeah, we didn't do anything, I, and that's without doing anything because they don't know that I painted. They don't know that I replaced the floor. When you say it's because of the leverage, you're talking about the down payment. Yeah, I'm. Well, no, I'm talking about the the house. The house cost five hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Right. I didn't have five hundred twenty five thousand yeah, okay. dollars. I had seventy five thousand right, dollars. But, but because we put that stake into it, and then we've been paying off our loan. That now that the value of the house has increased. That increases ours. So if we wanted to sell the whole thing tomorrow, we could walk away with more cash. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, we definitely make your monthly payments on time, but mm-hmm. um, it you look at the loan, like the value of the loan that you took out, right? So if you, um, for example, right now we just refinanced, and the house is valued at six hundred thousand now, which is seventy five thousand dollars, seventy five thousand dollars more than what the cost of that we paid for was. And so our loan stayed the same as what it was before the refinance. After we had made all of our payments, um, our loan is like four, 
40 or 438. So if we were to sell this place, you get $150,000. Incredible. Cash Incredible. After the sale. I mean, you'd have to pay the commission fees to realtors and stuff like that. But yeah, like you made cash. And actually it's tax free because um, it's lower than a certain, if your house is less than I think like 750 or something, you don't have to pay capital gains on that tax. So on the, on that property sale, you can just like take the cash. And, then and this go is buy why when house. people say when you're renting, you're burning your cash. This is exactly why, because yeah. you're missing out on all this kind of shit. Well, you're missing out. Yeah, exactly. On leveraging other people's money. Like you're paying the same amount that you would be paying in rent. But now you, your net worth went up in your sleep. You didn't do anything to make your house value go up besides, you know, maybe paint, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Or in but, my case, ding walls. So yeah, yeah, but you picked out. That's why the research is so important. Yeah. Picking out the neighborhood, picking out, you know, everything I said before. Okay. Plus, you were right, man. You knew this place was coming up, and it has. Yeah. Like we've noticed every time there's a new building here, we're like, oh shit! All right. Oh, okay. So I talked about this earlier. So, be getting your offer to beat other offers. People think that, like, I hear this a lot right now. Is that like, oh, I'm getting beat up by cash offers? Yes. Because people that pay in cash, sometimes they can negotiate. That's why Dave Ramsey loves cash, and I get it. You can negotiate a lot lower because people just want to take the cash. They yeah. don't want to deal with like whether or not your the sale is going to go through, and then it has to be an escrow for all this time, and then maybe it falls through, and then you didn't, they have to go through the process all over again. Like if you if someone comes to you and has cash, you can just go. You yes. know, there's no more strings, no muss, no fuss. Um, so sometimes people with cash, they know that, so they'll leverage knowing that and and offer a couple tens of thousands lower you know or maybe in some cases if your house is a lot like if it's like in the millions they can offer like hundreds of thousand dollars lower to pay in all cash um and then there's people that can afford the 20 percent down and if that's you you have a better chance at getting your the offer taken but um what about us that had 15 percent? why did we win why did we win over the person that had 20 percent? well we had a personal touch so it never hurts you to send a letter or some sort of like personal touch like we made a video mm -hmm. so and this is actually our realtor's idea because he had a, a lot of success with this and he still does he crushes it he's actually really he's really dope. really great he sends his christmas presents he sends he sends me more presents than Starbucks my family card. does oh my gosh Raf, we love you. We love him. So um, he had us do a video on the stairs while, while we looked at the, the condo. And at the end when we were like, we were in love, we want this place. We made a video and we just talked about us. We were like, we were newly married. We just got married that year or mm -hmm. the year before. Oh, yeah. We're newlyweds. This is, this is our first time buying a house ever. We love this place. We just love what you did with it. We complimented the shit out of them. Yeah. Um, and We're an interracial couple. Hope that's cool with you. <laughs> yeah, that really sold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and they, they took our offer over. Actually, they said, if you can match this other offer that's only $5,000 more than what you offered, then we'll take your offer over there. And you know what's great and about our guy? We did that, but then he all, he also got them to kick off five at the end of it. Do you remember that? Um, yeah, I don't, I remember like some... At the very, very end of like when we're about to sign the paper, it was all said and done. He basically got that taken back anyway. Oh, he was so good. He was great. Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. Find a good realtor, everybody. That's, it really. It really helps you a lot. Like, it, yeah, you pay commissions, but like you save so much money. They yeah. help you save so much money. Yeah. Okay, so personal touch. Find out what the seller wants. The seller on any every home is completely different. Sometimes they want money, sure, but they don't always want money. No, I've heard people write letters and, and get to the seller that way. Yeah. When they had somebody else with better leverage. So we closed in 22 days and the seller was so impressed by that. He um, left champagne on the counter and like, that's like right. wrote us a note and yeah. was like just so happy. And that's the thing too. Like if you can just make the process easier for the seller, if you can guarantee them, like put it in your letter that you will give them certainty. Sometimes yes. sellers just want certainty that the deal's not going to fall through. Yes. You know, and, and then sometimes when people pay with cash or have 20% down, they want all these things. Like they're like, well, can you actually fix the roof or can you actually fix the paint or can you actually fix this and that? And then, no, no, they don't want to deal with it. They would rather have someone that's like, hmm, new carpet, needs a new carpet, no problem. Yeah, when you have, a, and when you have a deal too, that's your attitude is like, oh my God, this place is so great. Mm -hmm. I already know what we can do. Let's just get this place bought and we can start to change it. Yeah, totally. And by the way, we lied in our video too. 
We said we wouldn't change one thing about this place. We have repainted like everything. <laughs> you say that a lot, but I don't see paint as a major change. Well, I get it, but I'm just but saying it was major for us though. This place was yellow. There was it, it, well, and it was not not set. just yellow. It was puke green, yellow, and puke green, and then it was and then it merged. There was a brown stripe in between the puke green, and then it goes to olive green, and then this room was pink. Right next to the puke green yellow, it was just a uh, like the '90s threw up on this yes. house and never and just left. Charming, as they say, it was very charming. Yeah, we went over it with Whisper White, but we did multiple. Coats. We did say, "Oh my gosh, love it." Yes. Yeah. Hundred thousand percent. At Couldn't... one at one point, probably in the '90s, I probably would have loved it. Uh, I don't know about that. It looked like a sitcom set for it did a look '90s like a sitcom show. Set. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what else? So, so make sure you're making every monthly payment. Duh. Uh, and then refinance. Either I just figured out how that cash refinance works because I had only looked at it from the point of view of like lowering your monthly payments. Right. But yeah, it, it just um, it I, I'd have to show you a visual, but you can basically when we were sitting down with the notary, that's another thing. You're gonna have to sign a lot of papers. Oh my God. When you yeah. buy a house or a refinance, I think we signed more papers in the refinance than the house. Yeah, we did. I don't even know what those papers said. I could have given away our firstborn child. I have no idea. I have no, I just signed Both wherever times. they, wherever, yeah, wherever they supposed to sign, I just signed. I don't when know. we went to the office to sign the first time with that lady and she just kept pointing at you and we just kept signing it, I was just like, I don't even know what's happening. In my head, I'm like, I mean, they could get sued if they did something <laughs> illegal, yeah, right? right? Exactly. So, like, mm, okay, how yeah. bad can it be? I just signed it. I signed everything. That's the only time I'll ever be like, yeah, it's okay to sign without a lawyer. Oh, <laughs> but, yeah. but I mean, it's pretty standard stuff. There's, you're gonna have a stack of papers, like 200, I think it was 250 something pages because we made a comment about it and he told us the amount of pages. It was 250. It took us like three hours sitting here and the notary was really cool. So we had yeah, like a dope. whole conversation with him. But um, he liked football at least. We had that. He had said, if like when he was explaining the refinance, for every hundred thousand dollars you take out, it'll add five hundred dollars to your monthly payment. And so, wait, say that again. For every, basically, it comes out to roughly every hundred thousand dollars you take out in cash, it'll add five hundred dollars to your monthly payment. Yeah. And um, and that I guess I was like okay, and I took that, but I I like to know how things work. Yes. You know, like I just like how, where, how, where does that money come from? Like, how's it there? I didn't put a hundred thousand dollars in this property. Like, how's it there? And that's when I like dug into like, oh, the equity. And, um, when you refinance your loans, it stays here, but your value went up here. So there's, even after you take 20% and keep your equity at 20%, as if you were basically buying, like this place is 600,000 and we come to buy a $600,000 property for 20 with 20% down. So $120,000 would be what we would have to put down to have 20%. Right. So you take that 600,000, you minus $120,000. So that's that comes to 480 480,000 and our loan is 440,000. So we could take $40,000 out, that difference between 440 and 480, we take $40,000 out and our payments would stay the same. So we could like remodel a bathroom or whatever. Yeah, or like, go buy another property yeah. or go put that into the stock the stock market right. or go build a business with it, you know, whatever and then you're other investment. You're paying that loan off like over time. Yeah, but yeah. now you got this sexy rate. You got this sexy, yeah. sexy. It's very sexy. 3.6% rate. It was worth all the papers to resign. It was. Yeah. And now we're working on building credit. Because yeah. the next place that we sign, we would want an even lower rate. Yes. Because wouldn't that be even sexier? Guys, listen, we're going in on property in 2021. We're going to buy nine houses at 3% <laughs> down each. Because Nikki figured it all out. Yeah, I got it all figured out. I'm an expert now. <laughs> no, I never feel like an expert. Every no. time I turn a corner, I'm like, there's all that to learn? Yeah. What? How come these aren't courses in public school? Like, everybody needs to know this. If you're going to build any sort of retirement or anything the, like the gatekeepers get paid way too much man to keep all that from you though so basically you know where we're at now i feel like i've learned so much but i also feel like there's so much more to learn it's a crash course man and, and you you even forget shit that like even shit that we did three years ago when we were signing for the place i yeah. forgot like like 20 percent of it doing oh this. and oh, here's one one more tip um when you're getting stuff redone 
there you're gonna get quoted like so many different things for the same job mm-hmm. for the, like and i i feel like they pull these numbers out of their asses like the contractors just like whatever number you know and so get a lot of quotes if you're gonna like let's say replace the carpet with hardwood floors get a lot of quotes um i thought i had this bomb ass deal like okay this is pretty standard and then i talked to my friend that um he buys rental properties for a living uh, and he was like, oh, you're getting ripped off. Like they, they shouldn't be charging that much for materials and all that stuff. I'm like, how am I supposed to know that? You're not supposed to know. You're not supposed to know. No. So once you find a good guy that like, or a good girl or whatever, like a good contractor that does good work for a good price, you freaking bake cookies every time they come over and you <laughs> <laughs> give them cookies. They're going to remember your house as the cookie house. That's true. You make sure your house smells like cookies when yep. they come over. They got to expect those cookies. They're going to get cookies. I love it. And maybe send them like a Starbucks card like our realtor does like, our realtor does that, and I'm like, I know who I'm going with next time. I oh, want to no when question. I want to sell my house, he's gonna sell it. And he's like, all I have to do is send these chumps Starbucks cards. I, I don't care a, if I'm giving him double commissions. He's so cool. I yeah, love he's him. Cool. But that's you know, you build rapport. You have to build rapport with contractors. I had no idea because when you're renting a place, you don't deal with that. The manager, yeah. your sink's broken. The manager fi- comes finds a contractor to fix it. You know, well, or you get unlucky and there's contractors and nightmares out there. Yeah, like where you you pay a guy up front. And then they don't finish walks. Up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got to yeah. find like good people and then you got to keep them. I love it. You got to keep them forever. And make in your them pocket. cookies, apparently. And you got to not tell anybody so they don't steal you. You know, <laughs> I, you know a couple years ago, I used to go to this shop um, f- to get you Valentine's Day stuff. Yeah. And um, I always saw the same woman in there and I would always like talk to her, small chat and stuff while she rang me up. And one time I. Uh, uh, I was like, you know, you're my, you're my like best kept secret or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cause like, n- you know, nobody, nobody knows knew. about how great this place is and all this shit. And she's like, please tell people about us. Don't, <laughs> don't keep us a secret. Aww. And I was like, oh Jesus. <laughs> Dang. I wonder if. I hope they're still there. Yeah. I know. That's sad. Yeah. Anyway, there's so, so much I'm learning right now. And I would, I would love, to, I know um, one of our Patreon members, Jake Grind. Sh- shout out to shout Jake. Out. Shout out he would like an investment episode. I yes. think there are plenty of good places to build wealth. Real estate is one of them. Mm-hmm. And I happen, I like real estate in the sense that you can live there inside of your yeah. investment. You can't live in a Bitcoin yeah, is what can, I found out. Exactly. But I do think that maybe one day you can. Maybe. We'll see as in it's the, emerging. Tech. In the digital world, the matrix world. Yeah. 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 So there are many, many other forms of investing. And I feel like it's so important to just start building wealth while you're in your 20s and 30s. Even if you're in your 40s, it's not too late, but just start. And isn't this the time of the year when you promise yourself you're going to do all kinds of cool shit? Yeah. Like really, this is this is it, guys. You could really do that. And if anything, 2020 showed us that like you had to be ready. <laughs> like <laughs> cuz like uh, it's like you're basically it reminded me of being in that N64 track or not N64, but the Mario Kart on um Switch. <laughs> the track where like the lava is making the road fall out from underneath you. Oh, it's crazy. Like, so you have to stay on this like really narrow road. That's what 2020 felt like. Absolutely. Like you're going to fall into that lava if you go even a tiny centimeter to your right. As intense music plays the whole time. Like, yeah. wow. Holy and cow. Bowser's like throwing fireballs at you. Yeah. God, Bowser in that game, man. All right, guys. Well, I hope uh, this was enjoyable. Did you enjoy it? I very much enjoyed it. Uh, can I ask you real quickly to do the math on the Bitcoin thing? Okay. All right, guys, Rebecca did the math. And if you would have bought Bitcoin when we bought our house and you put your $75,000 in a Bitcoin instead of this house, you would have made, you would now have $300,000, $297,794. However, you cannot live you inside can't of live a, Bitcoin. In a Bitcoin. Okay. So get yet. that out of your heads. Okay. Not yet. We're trying to find out how to do it. If you could. That would be really cool. That's right. So let us know when that when we get that going. Dang. I forgot to say, so even though our house was going up 7 to 9%, the value of the house, that w- doubling your money in two years is uh, a 30% return on investment per year. An annual, annualized rate of compounded return. What does that mean? It For mean, those of people who are like, what does that mean? It's 30% versus 7%. That's all you need to know. No, but what's the 7% part? Oh, if you were to put it into an index instead right. of the house. Perfect. So you got 7%, you got 30% if you were in the house, and you got a Bitcoin. lot of a lot of percent, a lot of percent if you went to Bitcoin. 
<laughs> but we'll talk about cryptocurrencies in the investment episode, okay? Yeah, don't even we sweat it. We will get to that. You guys know that. But hey, all you haters out there, I hope you're looking at my face right now. I love you. Look at his face. He's sexy. I love him. Bitcoin. Doesn't bitch. his hat look good? All right. Oh, thanks, baby. You're, you're so all right, sexy. we love you. Happy 2021, everybody. I hope it's better than 2020 in all ways and aspects and assets Amen. and assets. Oh, yeah. All right. Next week, we're, we have a Q&A, but we recorded it when Steve had COVID and I didn't. And so it's the, a Zoom episode, but it's it's really fun. So come back next week. Yeah, we'll see you And then. give us a like, a likey like. Thanks. And you. tell your friends about the show. That really helps out a lot. You guys have no idea. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.